Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're going to be having a look at the origin of the platelets, where they come from, how they go about their daily business, and what could potentially go wrong with the platelets. Before we understand the disorders of the platelet, let's have a look at the normal life cycle of a platelet first. So where does it all start? Well, it all starts at the liver, with the production of a protein known as thrombopoietin. Thrombopoietin then travels to the bone marrow, and it causes hematopoietic stem cells to go down the myeloid route and produce lots and lots of these purple cells known as megakaryocytes. The megakaryocytes then swell up, burst, and release platelets into our circulation. These circulating platelets have a shelf life of around 10 days before they are finally broken down by the spleen. Now, if we backtrack and see where things can go wrong, we can see that if we don't have uh, enough thrombopoietin, we might not have enough platelets because we won't be telling anyone to make them. So what could cause a reduction in thrombopoietin levels? Well, any damage or insult to the liver could cause an issue with thrombopoietin, and these include things like liver cirrhosis, where we have a fatty, dysfunctional liver, or excessive alcohol intake, which might lead to liver cirrhosis. Then we could have an issue with the production factory of our platelets, our bone marrow. And things for this include things that infiltrate the bone marrow, so things like leukemia, or myelodysplasia, which is uh, the precursor to leukemia. However, we haven't met the cell count to be uh, classified as leukemia. We could have things like a lymphoma, where we have a cancer of our lymph nodes, and this overspills into the blood and infiltrates our bone marrow. We could have things like myeloma, where we have a cancer of our plasma cells inside of our bone marrow. And finally, we could have a scarring of the bone marrow matrix in a condition known as myelofibrosis. Now, to find out a bit more about leukemia and myelodysplasia, I would recommend checking out the leukemia video as this uh, goes through exactly the cell lineages and how they arise. Other things that we might have is things like aplastic anemia, where we have uh, an infection and we're born with uh, some kind of bone marrow disorder where all of our uh, cell lineages are not being functional. And the last thing is if we don't have the substances to form our uh, platelets and form our cells, including things like B12 and folate, then we're not going to be able to form our platelets. Now, the next thing might be an issue with the platelets themselves. Say, for instance, if we had an immune attack or antibodies against our platelets in the case of idiopathic or immune thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP, our platelets tend to get attacked by our own immune system. Another thing that could happen is iatrogenic, where we give a medication to our patients, which causes them to de develop uh, antibodies in things like heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, where the administration of heparin actually causes the breakdown of platelets. And we'll get into both of these conditions in the coming slides. We could also have an intrinsic issue with how the platelets interact with each other. So when the platelets are activated, they bind to each other using a receptor known as the GP2B3A. If the receptor is missing or that receptor is dysfunctional, then the platelets cannot bind. And this is a condition that we call Glanzmann's thrombasthenia. Another issue that could happen is our platelets have a very difficult time binding to von Willebrand factor using the GPA1B receptor. And this is what we call uh, bernard soulier syndrome. Now, these two conditions are rather uh, fine print, so don't worry hugely about these ones. The last thing that could happen is that we may have an overactive spleen, a very hungry spleen, which uh, eats a lot of our uh, platelets in something like hypersplenism. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.